Imagine being an engineer at a startup and waking up to a storage server crash. Years of critical data gone. It's a nightmare scenario for any business. This is exactly the kind of disaster Amazon S3 is built to prevent. Amazon S3 is a cloud object storage service designed to store and retrieve any amount of data from anywhere. And it's famous for an almost unbelievable promise. 99.9999999999 percentile durability. That's 11 nights. Meaning, if you store 10,000 files in S3, you might expect to lose one file every 10 million years. In other words, data loss is astronomically unlikely. How does S3 achieve this level of durability? In this video, we'll explore the clever engineering strategies that make S3 so resilient. Let's get started. Before we jump into the how, let's take a quick second to define durability because it's often confused with availability. Availability is about being able to access your data whenever you want, like your app being online and responsive. Durability, on the other hand, is about making sure that data doesn't silently vanish or get corrupted over time. It's about protecting the actual bits you store, so they stay exactly the same year after year. With that aside, let's start with the most fundamental layer of Amazon S3's durability promise. Rule number one, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's the philosophy S3 begins with. At the kind of massive scale AWS operates, hard drives are constantly failing, literally every day. And that's just the reality of hardware. They are cheap, they are large, but they do wear out. So how does S3 deal with that? By spreading your data across multiple physical devices the moment it arrives. So when you upload a file to S3, it's instantly replicated not just to other disks, but to different servers across multiple availability zones. Think of these zones as separate data centers, each with its own power, networking, and cooling systems. That means even if an entire data center goes offline due to say a power outage or natural disaster, your data is still intact and accessible from the others. It's like having a backup of your most valuable documents locked in vaults in different cities. If one gets hit, you are still covered. But S3 doesn't stop at replication. It takes things to the next level with something called eraser coding. Here is how it works. Imagine your data is a big puzzle. S3 breaks it down into multiple pieces called data shards and then creates a few extra special puzzle pieces called parity shards. Even if a few pieces go missing, S3 can still reconstruct the full puzzle from the ones that remain. This is way more efficient than simple duplication and way more resilient. It's kind of like RAID, but at a cloud scale, spanning not just multiple disks, but entire buildings. These shards are stored across different devices, different racks, and even different data centers. So the odds of enough pieces disappearing to cause actual data loss? Almost zero. And if you're curious about how eraser coding actually works, the math, the logic, the real world use cases, I've already made a deep dive video just on that. So that's the first layer of durability in S3 a distributed, eraser-coded safety net that's always watching your back. Now, let's say a drive fails, which again is not a question of if, but when. Redundancy is great, but only if you can recover fast. That's why S3 is constantly checking the health of every single storage device. It monitors metrics like read-write errors, temperature, desk wear levels, almost like doing regular checkups on thousands of patients in a hospital. And the moment something looks off, Boom, S3 springs into action. An automated system kicks off the recovery process. It marks the bad dust, pulls data from the healthy copies, and begins reconstructing everything onto a new device. But here's the clever part. S3 doesn't fill up its disk all the way. Each disk has a bit of breathing room, some free space reserved for exactly the kind of emergency. So when one disk fails, it's not just one or two others helping out. A swarm of disks across the systems pitch in, each taking on a small piece of the recovery load. It's like traffic jams suddenly getting a bunch of new open lanes. The data flows freely, fast, and efficiently. And this massive parallel recovery process ensures that your data is restored before anything else goes wrong. Now, what happens if it's not just one disk, but a bunch of them? Like say, it's an especially hot day in a data center and multiple drives go down at once. S3 can handle that too. 
is designed to recognize spikes in failure rates and scale up repairs accordingly. More compute, more bandwidth, more repair jobs launched in parallel. It's like a fire department dispatching more trucks the moment multiple alarms ring at once. The goal? Keep recovery speed ahead of failure speed. Because that's the key of maintaining level 9s of durability, even when things go sideways. Alright, so your data is stored in multiple places and recovery is fast if anything fails. But there is another critical question. How do you know your data hasn't silently changed? What if a bit flips or a shard gets slightly corrupted without anything noticing? That's where checksums come in. Think of a checksum like a digital fingerprint of your data. When you upload a file to S3, it generates a unique checksum. Kind of like sealing your file in an envelope and writing the contents on the outside. That way, when someone opens it later, they can verify everything exactly as it should be. Even a tiny change, say a single bit flipping from 0 to 1, will create a complete different checksum. And S3 will catch it instantly. Now here's the impressive part. S3 doesn't check the data when you upload it. It continues checking even after your data is stored. Each shard, each piece of data has its own embedded checksum. And S3 routinely scans all those shards in the background. Kind of like running health checks on your data while you sleep. If it finds something off, it doesn't panic. It just fixes it quietly in the background by reconstructing the bad shard from the healthy ones. This constant audit of your data, plus the ability to restore it instantly, is what makes S3 not just reliable, but resilient over time. Now, here is something that sets S3 apart in really subtle but powerful way. Let's say you upload a file. Normally with most systems, once the data lands on disk, you get a green check mark. Upload successful. But S3 doesn't trust that so easily. Before it ever tells you success, it does one final thing behind the scenes. A step known as bracketing. What does that mean? It takes the data it just stored, which has already been eraser coded and split into shards and tries to reconstruct the original file right then and there. If that reconstruction works lawlessly, only then does S3 response with success. This extra round trip check guarantees that your file isn't just stored. It's recoverable right now. No surprises later. It's a small thing that adds huge confidence. Because when you store something in S3, you're not just putting it away. You're making sure you can always get it back. All right, so your data is safe, it's recoverable, and it's verified. But let's zoom out a bit and look at how S3 organizes that data under the hood. One of the smartest design decisions, S3 separates your data from your metadata. Metadata is all the info about your object, like the file names, size, timestamps, permissions, while the actual object is your data, the thing you uploaded. Instead of storing both together in one place, S3 splits them up. Metadata lives in a highly durable, distributed system that's optimized for fast lookups. Meanwhile, your data lives in massive storage clusters optimized for large-scale throughput. Why does that matter? Because if something goes wrong with one system, say the metadata database has a hiccup, your actual file isn't affected, and vice versa. This separation gives you performance and protection. You get fast metadata operations like listing files, while the actual storage layer can focus on durability and scale. And now, add one more layer, geographical separation. S3 stores your data across multiple availability zones. And each of those is made up of physically distinct data centers. We are talking buildings with separate power cooling networking, even located miles apart in some cases. So even if fire breaks out in one data center, or if one entire zone goes offline, your data is still safe and accessible from the others. It's not just redundancy, it's fault isolation at the infrastructure level. Because true durability means planning for the worst, even if it seems unlikely. Now, here is a twist. Not all data loss comes from hardware failure or natural disasters. Sometimes, it's just us. Maybe someone deletes the wrong file, maybe a script goes rogue and overrides critical data. And it happens more often than we like to admit. That's why S3 has built-in defenses against human error too. The first one, versioning. When you turn on versioning on S3 bucket, every time you update or delete an object, S3 doesn't actually get rid of the original. It just keeps the old version quietly in the background. So if you ever delete something by mistake or need to roll back to a previous state, it's all there. It's like having a time machine of your files. You can also enable object log, which lets you make data completely undeletable for a set period of time, even by someone with admin access. 
Super useful in legal or compliance scenarios where oops is not an acceptable excuse. And for extra protection, many teams set up cross-region replication where critical data is automatically copied to a totally different region. That way, even if something catastrophic happens in one part of the world, your data lives on elsewhere. All of these ties into a core idea. S3 doesn't just protect against technical failures, it accounts for human ones too. Because durability isn't just about hardware resilience, it's about protecting your data from everything, including ourselves. Perhaps one of the most subtle yet important reasons S3 achieves such extreme durability is the engineering culture and processes. Now here is something you won't see in any diagram or dashboard, but it might just be the most important piece of all. At Amazon, durability isn't just a checklist. It's a culture. Every change to S3, whether it's a new feature, a config tweak, or an infrastructure upgrade, it all goes through a durability review. Engineers are expected to think through everything that could go wrong, simulate worst case scenarios, and prove that even in failure, your data stays intact. It's like the aerospace mindset. If you are launching a rocket, failure isn't just inconvenient, it's catastrophic. And that same mindset is baked into S3's DNA. And it doesn't stop at theory. Amazon runs constant simulations, models disk failure rates, and pressure tests the system from every angle. If anything even threatens the 11.9's target, they tweak the architecture or add safeguards to close the gap. Because when you make a promise like 11.9's durability, you don't leave anything to chance. So why does 11.9's matter? Amazon S3 doesn't just store your data. It protects it with layers of engineering, years of experience, and a relentless focus on doing one thing really, really well. Never lose a single bit. So the next time you upload something to the cloud and take for granted that it will be there tomorrow, now you know why. If you found this breakdown helpful, consider sharing it with a teammate or someone building on AWS. And if you are into deep dives like this, architecture, system design, real-world tech stories, hit subscribe because there is plenty more coming. Until next time, stay curious and build with confidence.